and you say to yourself, is that it? I mean, 50, 60 years, scraping, struggling, scheming, lying, stealing, fornicating, jumping up and down, begging, working, and this is the end of it? I mean, is this what's gonna happen to me? Are they gonna be dropping me into a hole in the ground? A hole in the ground! Majority of mankind are the slaves of their desires. They follow their desires. They do exactly what the desire wants them to do. Even if it's wrong, even if it's harmful, even if it's evil, we follow our desire. But that moment that you remind yourself of death, or you know that you'll be dying, then you no longer become the slave of your desire. You become the true slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran says, you are busy piling up, calculating, developing your careers, your money, your occupation, your wealth, until you visit the graves. Think about it. When was the last time that you went to a funeral was it your mother? Was it your father? Was it your grandfather? Was it your uncle? Was it your cousin? Was it your friend? Was it your wife? Was it your husband? The last time that you visited the grave, when you went to a funeral and you saw that person whom you loved that was laughing, crying, live, boasting, wealthy, educated, denying, arrogant, whatever they were. What was the demeanor of the people when you walked in that funeral home, when that person was stretched out in their last suit? What was the demeanor? Were the people cracking jokes? Were they dancing? Were they clapping and singing songs? No, silence. Melancholy, trauma. Why? Because every person that walked in that room, seeing that person stretched out, the first thing they thought about was not the person. The first thing they thought about was that one day, this will be me. Look at Allah, how Allah showered us with blessings. This is why Allah will say, I gave him everything. I gave him blessings upon blessings. You never asked for them. Tell me, my young friend, when was the last time you ever raised your hand and you thanked Allah for these eyes? When was the last time you ever raised your hand and you thanked Allah for all these blessings that he gave you? My friends, you didn't ask for them, but you know what? He was the Arhamul Rahimeen, the Akramul Akrameen, the Ajwadul Ajwadeen. Without you asking, without you begging, without you prostration, prostrating, he would give, he would give, he would give and he would watch you turning your back on him becoming bl blind and deaf to his teachings you had time for everything you had time to watch the uh, Liverpool game you had time to go and chill with your friends you had time to wine and dine but the only thing and being that you didn't have time for for the one that gave you these zillions and zillions of blessings and he weighed he allowed you to make Tawbah, because he accepts Tawbah. He embraces those that turn to him. Till when? Before the soul comes out of your body. He was waiting patiently. Maybe Abdullah today will embrace me. Indeed, he's lived, lived 99 years of sin. Maybe today he will embrace, he, embrace me. Maybe today he will turn to me. But Abdullah didn't. He was still arrogant. Right till death do his part. Allah will say, now bring him. His time's come to an end. He lived a life of sin. He didn't believe. He rejected. Bring him to me today and I will punish him like none other. 
If anyone is diagnosed with illness or a disease by the doctor and he says he only has a few months to live, watch their character changes. Watch their life turn from one angle to another. Watch them repent. And it's good. But what saddens me is, we wait for a doctor to tell us that you're going to die, and yet it's not enough when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul shall taste death. Every soul shall taste death. Every single one of us. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala relates that on one occasion, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam asked the angel of death. He said, O oh, angel of death, show me the form that you assume when you come to take the soul of a, a good believer, the sons of the akhirah, the followers of Rasulullah, the lovers of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, tell me how do you take their soul? So the angel of death said, Ibrahim, turn your face away. He turned his face away. After a short while, he looks at the angel of death and what does he find? He finds a very handsome young man, beautiful of face, beautiful clothing, you know, sweet smell emitting from his body. When Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, saw such a handsome sight, such a handsome sight, he said to uh, say, uh, the angel of death, or angel of death, if this was the only blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for a believer, just looking at the beauty of your face that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, that would be sufficient. Ibrahim said, okay, now I want you to show me the form that you take, assume when you take the soul of a disobedient servant of Allah. The angel of the said uh, to Ibrahim, Ibrahim, no. Even though you, that you're a great Nabi of Allah, you will not be able to tolerate this, O Ibrahim. Ibrahim insisted, alayhi salam. Looked away, after a short while, he looks again. What does he see? A man, black of face, dark black, black clothing. His head is in the heaven. His feet is on the earth. His body is covered with hair. Under every hair, there are flames of fire which are leaping. Flames of fire coming out of his nostrils. Flames of fire coming out of his mouth. Ibrahim والسلام, couldn't tolerate this. He fainted. He fainted. When he finally gained consciousness, he turned round to the angel of death and said, if this was the only punishment that Allah has in store for a dying servant that is disobedient, then that would be sufficient. No other punishment would be required. So this is how the angel of death comes to receive this person. Black face, black clothing, flames coming out of his nose, flames coming out of his mouth, flames leaping from every hair. He has in his hand a forked mace made out of fire. 500 angels that accompany him. They have with them a piece of copper, huge embers of Jahannam, and each angel is carrying whips made out of fire. This is how now this army of Allah goes to receive the soul of this dying disobedient servant of Allah.